Hello, this is Kalyani Valat. I am sitting in front of the Christ Church at St. Aldate's in Oxford. And in an experiment, I am just showing you the whereabouts of the church. And I am going to talk to you about English in India. Nothing is more ironic than an Indian in Britain talking about English in India. Okay? Uh oh, there's a man coming and sitting down. I hope I won't be troubling him. Why I'm doing this experiment is because there is a famous silent movie made by Andy Warhol, the American postmodern pop artist. Andy Warhol made a movie, Empire. He just put a camera in front of Empire State Building for like eight hours. There's no conventional plot, there's no narrative, there is no character. Just eight hours of slow motion footage of what happens in front of the Empire State Building. Well, this video is going to be a movie of that sort. English in India started with the East India Company. The East India Company was established at the beginning of the 17th century and uh, English in India, the term or the topic refers to not just Indian literature in English but also the socio-political events, the beginnings of English education in India, the education commissions and so on and so forth. English education started when the East India Company from, began to promote English language learning and also the missionaries began to do evangelical work and to promote religion they began to teach English. English was centered primarily, English education was centered primarily in the private schools at this time. In the 18th century there were Indologists, that means Westerners who studied India. A very important figure among them was William Jones. William Jones supported Indian languages, especially Sanskrit. He even considered Sanskrit as the mother of all Western languages. He translated Abhitnana Shakundalam in 1789 and established the Royal Asiatic Society of Bengal. At this time, English education had the aim of not only educating us but also civilizing us. Obviously, this was the white man's burden, as Rudyard Kipling put it. And uh, the British promoted printing presses in India, printing of both Indian as well as English books, vernacular books as well as English books. The first newspaper started in the 18th century. It was the newspaper Hickey's Bengal Gazette. Eventually, newspapers would play a major role in the Indian independence movement. At this time, uh, the private schools that promoted English education were not accessible to all. There were only a few private schools. And it was in the 19th century that Western education became really popular. When English education became popular in India, there emerged two groups of people, the Orientalists who were against English education and the Anglicists who promoted English education. The Anglicists believed that Indian languages had nothing to teach its people, whereas the Orientalists supported la uh, education in Sanskrit and there were people like Debindranath Tagore, the father of Rabindranath Tagore, who went from house to house and asked people not to send their children to English medium schools. Now, the first of the Indian education acts came as a result of Macaulay's minutes presented to Lord William Bentick in February 1835. Macaulay's minute present, uh, put into practice many of Lord William Bentick's ideas on education 
and it was the first uh, formal act that institutionalized English education. It spelled out the ideology behind English education. Macaulay envisaged an educational system that would create a class of anglicized Indians. This is eventually called the Babu class. He wanted to create a class of anglicized Indians who would serve as cultural intermediaries between the English and the Indians. At this time, as I already said, English education was a means of controlling the Indian population. Macaulay strongly recommended the withdrawal of support for the publication of Sanskrit and Arabic books. He wanted the government to reduce support for traditional education, religious and non-formal education. He did not want the British government to support it. He said that the British government should use funds in teaching what is best worth knowing. Of course, what is best worth knowing is English and literature and books written in English. He believed that the Indian population wanted to learn English. Macaulay famously said, a single shelf of a good European library, a single shelf of a good European library was worth the whole native literature of India and Arabia. He believed that India and Arabia had literature of the imagination, while facts, science, reason all came from Europe. Macaulay thus asserted the superiority of the Europeans in producing works in which facts are recorded. Only in European works are facts recorded and general principles investigated. Macaulay believed that whoever knows English has ready access to the vast intellectual wealth. Macaulay believed that whoever knows English has ready access to the vast intellectual wealth which all the wisest nations of the earth have created and hoarded in the course of 90 generations. It means Macaulay believed that for 90 generations the Westerners have created intellectual wealth, they have collected and hoarded intellectual wealth and when they came and ruled us they were just giving us intellectual wealth and in return taking our material goods. Macaulay believed that we must at present do our best to form a class of Indians who may be interpreters between us and the millions. I'm quoting from Macaulay. We must at present do our best to form a class of Indians who may be interpreters between us and the millions whom we govern. A class of persons Indian in blood and color but English in taste, opinions, morals, and in intellect. He wanted to create Indians who had English tastes, opinions, morals, and intellect. And Macaulay believed that to that class of Indians that we create by teaching them English, to that class of Indians, we may leave it to refine the vernacular dialects of the country. The vernacular dialects of the country will be refined by those Indians who have English education. Thus, Macaulay envisaged the creation of the Babu class. Macaulay's suggestions and recommendations were not accepted completely. There was a debate over it. James Mill and his son J.S. Mill criticized Macaulay's minute and they said that English education may not lead to cultural change. 
if Indians are taught English, that does not mean they will change their uh, culture. And J.S. Mill said it is not clear how far the Indian masses will be influenced by this interim class. Rather than create a new working class who knew English, J.S. Mill believed that the aristocratic Indians who already knew English should be focused on. However, Macaulay's recommendations and J.S. Mill's recommendations, neither of these were fully practiced. That is about Macaulay's minute of 1835 in a nutshell.